Welcome to DSAT, our short podcast series about prep for the new digital SAT. I'm your host, Vince Cochin. In today's episode, I talk with our SAT tutor, Blake Jensen, about what parents and students should know about the new version of the SAT. If you have any questions for us, feel free to contact us at vincecochin.com. Hello, everybody. This is Vince Cochin here. Uh, I'm the founder of Vince Cochin Test Prep. We do SAT, ACT, and GRE tutoring here in San Diego, and we work with clients not only here, but all over the world via Zoom. So I'm here today with grizzled SAT tutoring veteran, Blake Jensen, who I want to talk a little bit more with about the digital SAT. Yet another new SAT is coming out, and it's called the Digital SAT And it's going to be available soon to take online. So I want to get a little bit of information about it for parents and, you know, students who are studying for this test. So Blake, um, thanks for being here. Um, Just want to want to explain for parents, what, what's the deal with this new test? Like, how is it different than the current test? Yeah. Thanks Vince. Um, I would say the, the first thing to cover is that it kind of comes out in three phases. Um, so international students are taking the digital SAT this March. So Mm -hmm. they're already switched over to the digital SAT. The next PSAT in October of this year for us students is going to be the digital version of the PSAT. So all the us students taking the PSAT next fall will be, um, taking the digital version of that. And then starting next year in 2024 in March, all SATs in the U.S. as well will be the digital test. So by March of next year, um, everyone will be taking the digital SAT, but it comes in three phases. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So there's no going back to the old SAT at that point, right? It's the digital, and that's the right. only SAT you can take. Right. And of course, the ACT is still on paper right. at this point. Yeah, and cool. they have they have not announced any plans lately um, as far as switching to digital and uh, I believe they had announced before COVID that they were looking at doing that, and then they quickly scrapped those plans. So um, no word since then. Cool. So if a student is, you know, we we all kind of know the, the SAT probably from taking it ourselves in high school. It's changed over the years to some degree. What what are the most important things that you think parents and, and students need to know about this new version in, in terms of prep? Yeah. So most of the test prep materials for the current test are still going to be valid. Uh, There are a few changes. I would say the biggest changes are to the reading section. And there are a couple other changes we'll get to in a second. But one of the ones that seems most relevant to a lot of students is that the test is now shorter. It's about an hour shorter than it was before. So a little over two hours. And the way that they're able to still have a valid test Uh, but get it done in two hours is by making the test section adaptive. And so this is what the GRE uses and somewhat similar to what the GMAT uses. And basically what happens is you will get a verbal section um, mixed with easy, medium, and difficult questions. And if you do well on that, your next verbal section will be uh, full of hard questions. And if you don't do as well on that, you'll get a section, your second verbal section will be full of easier questions. Uh, This is also true with the math. And so what this allows the test to do is to kind of see, it allows the test to find your level, your score level a little bit faster. Uh, Kids who are trying to score high on the SAT, uh, they'll get most of the easy questions right. And the digital SAT by being section adaptive basically skips that part. And they just start getting to questions where you know, where, where it's not going to be just a cakewalk for them. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, I I think it's true that um, just like most computer adaptive tests, it's to your advantage to do as well as you can on that first section. So that you get harder second section. Yeah. Yes. I I know you've seen this too, where sometimes uh, students try to come up with a, a a trick or a system or a hack to get around it. And they think, well, if I bomb the, uh, the first section, then I'll get easy questions and then I'll get more questions. Right. Um, each question is not necessarily worth uh, the same. It doesn't have the same effect on your score. And so, um, yeah, you definitely don't want to tank that first section. It may make you feel better, 
uh, because you'll be seeing easier questions, but it's going to hurt your score and it could hurt your score quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Of course. Yeah. Um, so if, if parents are thinking about how do I, how do I get my kid ready for this test or for the ambitious students watching this, you know, the, how can, how can we start preparing for it? I, I know you said most of the current materials, um, for the current test are, uh, useful, um, but what are the exceptions to that? And what can we, what are we expecting to see in the coming months for, you know, for the U S students who need to get ready for this thing? I woke, what uh, sort of things should they be thinking about doing? So uh, previous SATs from 2015 on are still good practice, but the reading comprehension section is the most different. Um, the passages are going to be a lot shorter and you're going to get one question per passage. And the historical kind of persuasive speech passages that almost every student hates that can be from as far back as 400 years ago those are going to be gone. So you don't have to practice those anymore. Um, but the, so the grammar section, section two on the current SAT gets combined with the reading section. So there's really like a verbal and a math in the digital SAT and the English uh, material that you get that was in section two of the old SAT still valid. Erica Meltzer's book is good. I like the study lark uh, book for that as well. Khan Academy has good free practice for that too. Uh, for math, I like math chops. I like 1600.io. Uh, Ella Sharma has a good, two good SAT math books there. Those are still going to be um, useful. I think because the digital SAT is adaptive, students who are trying to score high um, want to see as many very difficult questions as possible. And so I think math chops has a pretty um, noticeable advantage in that you can it's adaptive as well. And in the past, you know, when we're working with students and we want them to get a high score, we, with kids who were doing well, let's just say in math, we wanted to make sure they didn't miss the easy ones, right? So we did give them a lot of practice for the easy ones. But for the students taking the adaptive test, they're gonna get through those easy ones pretty quickly. And then they're just gonna see a lot of hard questions. And so if you're trying to score, you know, try to get a high score on that, you wanna make sure you see as many um, difficult questions as possible. So for the reading, um, the current SAT reading prep books and systems aren't that great a match anymore. Uh, there's still some vocab and context. The old SAT from before 2015 and the old GRE actually have some good verbal practice there. There's some sentence completion stuff and the reading passages are generally shorter. And so you're answering questions based on those. So those are a pretty good mix. Uh, Erica Meltzer has a book that she's working on that I think her the last time I saw she uh, announced that she was hoping to have it done by February, and that will likely be one of the one of the best options for um, for someone trying to improve their reading score. Yeah, yeah, and for those of you, um, I'll I'll put those of you watching this on YouTube. I'll I'll put links to all those resources Blake mentioned in the uh, in the description of the video, and I'll put them on our website as well on our digital SAT page. Um, but that's great information. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, from what I hear, the reading material, the reading SAT practice material for the new digital SAT, there there really isn't a good source yet, but we're certainly always have been fans of Erica Meltzer's stuff, and we're looking forward to her book. But um, that's one of the most challenging things for students who are getting ready for the test right now or who are international. By the time U.S. students have the test rolled around, there should be some material available. But that's, that's great in terms of... Uh, a list of resources people can use. So any just big picture wrap up that you want to leave people with here, just in terms of, um, you know, what are our top three takeaways about the new test, perhaps, and or doesn't have to be just three that we need to remember. And in terms of uh, preparing for it, um, you know, if you're one of those families who who needs to deal with this test. Yeah, I think um, one thing that we that we should mention, too, is that, uh, the digital SAT will include uh, the Desmos calculator, graphing calculator. And mm -hmm. I think um, being prepared to use that effectively and in a reasonable amount of time is really important. Um, you know, the TI 84 and 83 and the different versions of the TI have been kind of the, the standard that students have used going into the SAT. Um, but the Desmos calculator has some, some things that it can do that that the graphing calculators can't, and you want to use every advantage that you have. 
Um, and then Vince, I think you're working on some videos for helping uh, students get ready for the for the reading portion of the digital SAT. Is that right? Yeah, I'm putting together some walkthroughs. Uh, I think people tend to like those where I just kind of solve questions and kind of talk out loud about like what I'm thinking when I see certain patterns. And so those are going to be available on YouTube very soon. But um, yeah, that's I, I find for people who like learning from videos and who, that's going to be a pretty useful way to get some strategy for those parts of the test. Yeah, and I would say that the big takeaways are um, the test is pretty similar, but it's it's shorter, it's adaptive, and right now um, there are still good resources for practicing math and English. But um, you're going to have to stay tuned uh, for the best resources for uh, for the reading portion. And of course, we're all we're kind of ahead of the game here. If if, if you're in the U.S., there's plenty of time to get ready for this thing. Um, like you said, the PSAT is coming up in October, but by then there'll be plenty of practice material that'll help for that test. And of course, for the digital SAT for U.S. students coming in March of next year. Well, great. This has been helpful. Blake, thanks a lot for taking the time. Yep. Um, Blake, again, is one of our SAT tutors at Vince Coach and Test Prep. We do SAT, ACT, and GRE prep. And stay tuned. We'll be back with more little mini podcasts about SAT prep and the digital SAT and more coming soon. All right. Thanks, Vince. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Just a reminder, if you have any questions about SAT prep, you can contact us at vincecochin.com.